The Lord be with you. Good morning. A warm welcome to you all as we gather for worship today. Today is, um, it is baptism of our Lord Sunday. Oh my gosh. I do this for a living. You think I shouldn't forget these things. But do you know pastors tend to forget like little things like get halfway through the Lord's Prayer and then we go blank or halfway through the words of institution and then go blank. I don't know why that is. Maybe you have something similar in your own line of work where you should know something but then you just totally blank out. So I'm supposed to talk to you or point out the Bloodmobile um, announcement, which is under community news. Uh, please pay attention to this and sign up as you are able. I've been uh, told that I'm supposed to, to tell you this. I think it's a great program. I think it's really important. Any way that you can be of uh, connection with this, please do so. I'm going to leave the rest of the announcements to you, hopefully not to read during the sermon. Looking at you, Nathan. Just kidding. Just kidding. Let's begin with a word of prayer. The Lord be with you. Lord God, you call your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and love supporting us. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will sing, Baptized in Water. Please rise. On this baptism of our Lord Sunday, we recognize those who were baptized during the last year. Maverick, Lincoln, Liam, Elena, Nora, Jackson, Graham, uh, also uh, for Quinn. Instead of gathering at the front of the church, uh, please rise where you are seated, if you are present. Well, we're all standing. <laughs> See, this is the lovely thing. This is just so lovely. Things just happen like this. It's good. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. 
Ever-living God, author of creation, we give you thanks for, your, for the gift of water that brings life and refreshes the earth. We bless and praise you, for by water and the word we are cleansed from sin and receive everlasting life. Join us again this day to the saving death of Christ. Renew in us the living fountain of your grace and raise us with Christ Jesus to live in newness of life. For you are merciful and your love you love your whole creation and with all your creatures we give you glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, who gives us a new birth by water in the Holy Spirit and forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us eter- give us eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sin, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved children. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your Spirit that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you all to please be seated, except for Quinn. Quinn should not be seated. Quinn should not be. Quinn should come on forward. Come on forward, Quinn. Hello. Hi. How are you? Yeah, I'm pretty scary. I agree. So this Bible is for you. And I invite parents and grandparents and other people to read this to you because this tells you the story of God's love for you. God's love for you. It's okay. It's okay. Really, I'm not scary. Don't ask them. They don't know. So I'm going to pray with you now, if that's okay. Quinn, can I hold your hand? I wouldn't either. Okay, let's pray. (laughs) Our good and gracious God, for the gift of Quinn's life, for the witness of Quinn's life, shining the light of your love into the world, we give you thanks. Continue to burn brightly in her life. Let her know your love that will not let her go. For the sake of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. I'm I'm not going to give this to you. I'm going to give this to your mom. That's what I said, her sister. I'm going to give it to her sister. And uh, uh, I just gave somebody gray hair out in the congregation. I'm sorry sorry about that. We now hear God's holy word.
Good morning. The first reading comes from Genesis 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel from Mark, the first chapter. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, for the gift of baptism, for the gift of being named and claimed your children, for the gift of being held in your hands, we are so grateful. Continue to burn brightly in our lives, O Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Just notice there's a whole sermon up here. Somebody's funeral. Anyway. In the background of Mark's Gospel... In the story of God's people, when Jesus came on the scene, there was a back story. And here it is. The temple was at the center of the life of the people of God. It's there that they worshiped God and praised God and prayed to God and grieved with God in the midst of sadness from death or destruction. It was the place where people gathered to be reminded who they were and whose they were, and it was also a place where people gathered socially. The temple really was at the center of society, the very center of it. And the Roman government came through and didn't like that people were worshiping God, and so they destroyed the temple. 
and with it was destroyed everybody's hope. Unsure now where their hope was going to be found. Unsure where they would turn when things grew difficult, hard, sad, uncertain. So Mark writes the Gospel of Mark, the first of the four Gospels that we have that were written. And Mark tells this story in this way. He begins by bringing Jesus to the baptismal font. He doesn't, or the baptismal lake actually, he doesn't bring Jesus through a manger and uh, up through the, his shenanigans when he was a teenager, we get right to it. We get right to the heart of things. Jesus is brought to the Jordan and baptized by his cousin John. Now, here's why this is at the front of the gospel. Baptism, of course, is the place where we are named and claimed God's own. Yes, absolutely, where we are told that nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, where we are promised that forgiveness is not conditional but is unconditional, where we are promised that God walks alongside of us even when nobody else will, when we are promised that God will not leave us to our own devices. But this is only part of the story. There is this phrase that happens right before Jesus is baptized in the River Jordan. Right, right after, after he's baptized, he comes up out of the water and he sees the heavens torn apart. He sees the heavens torn apart. How many of you sew or knit in the congregation? Some of you? Some of you do? I do not. When I took home ec, they said, please just be done. Which, which is the same thing they said to me in industrial arts, which is really funny because my dad was the chair of the industrial arts department for the whole district. But you know, if you sew, that there are some tears and rips that can be repaired. And there are some that just cannot. Is that fair? All right. Well, <laughs> the one thing I learned in home ec. Okay, so here's the thing, though. When the heavens were torn apart, this was a tear that was not going to be repaired, not going to be restored because there was this vision, this understanding that God was in heaven and people were on earth and never the twain shall meet. But when the heavens tore apart, God came down. God was on the loose. God would show up among God's people. If you are, if you are grieving because of the destruction of a temple or the destruction of a nation, or the destruction of everything you know to be central, and the heavens tear apart, this is good news, for there is no telling where God will show up. There is no telling how God will walk alongside of us. There is no telling how forgiveness and mercy and love will show up, will be ours, will wrap itself around us and not let us go. This is good news. When you and I were baptized, you know, Jesus was completely immersed because that's what they did back then. They still do in, in certain denominations. But when you and I were baptized, you might have been baptized with a few handfuls of water if you were baptized in the hospital, maybe a Dixie cup held a little water and the nurse poured it over your head. 
But here's the deal. When you were baptized, the heavens were torn apart for you. They were torn apart for you. So that no matter what comes, no matter what happens, no matter the problems that find themselves to you, you have hope. You have mercy. You have love. Because God is no longer predictable. God is on the loose in your life. Grounded in the love of God in Christ Jesus who dies and is raised from the dead for us, you and I not only have hope, but hope has us and will not let us go, ever. I tell you all this to tell the story of, well, I want to tell you a little bit about my early years. I mean, before I sang Goat's Milk on the Mountain in the Christmas program in kindergarten, and before I did all sorts of crazy things like went door to door at five o'clock in the morning to greet my neighbors and to pretend to be taking orders for flowers. Before I did all that, before I did all that, I was born premature. Hard to believe, I know, but I was born premature. I was like five pounds. And, um, you know, uh, the first several years I was in, in, in and out of the University of Minnesota Hospital. And every time I went into surgery, my parents were told, well, kiss him for the last time because he probably won't survive. I'm hydrocephalic. I have excess water on the brain. I haven't had a, sh a revision of my shunt since I was three years old. That one has still taken, still kept up. Thank goodness. But... To imagine my parents like grief and shock and awe and I was the first I'm the first child and you know what did they do wrong and what how did this happen and all the rest terribly terribly hard and every time the doctors and nurses would come out they'd say well it was successful and they'd be like oh, good thank goodness but before that surgery I was baptized in a Missouri Synod church that my parents attended at the time well, and by attended, I mean when they felt like it. And by when they felt like it, I mean like maybe they had been there once before my baptism. Maybe once before. And probably not even then. So, in, this, in these waters, I was carried through really death to life. I was carried really through what could have been a much different outcome into what it is that happened. And I think about this because because, you know, often when we think about baptism, we, th we tend to think of it just as something that we do because it's what everybody else does. Or that's what our family, it's just what our family does. When we have children, we get them baptized. Why? We don't know. We just do it. It's like confirmation. Why do we take our kids to confirmation? Because they too should be punished. I mean, they too should learn about the love of God. That's why we have confirmation. That is why we have confirmation. And the worst part is, is that was just broadcast. So, but sometimes we don't think about what it means, really, what it means, what baptism means. Grafted to the death and resurrection of Jesus in the waters of baptism, God doesn't promise that things won't go wrong in your life. God promises to come down, to be present, to be on the loose. Right. That's exactly right. Amen. <laughs> that God promises to come down, to be present, to be on the loose in your life and in mine, so that even when hell 
breaks loose. There is still hope. When all hell breaks loose, there is still hope. Daily, I remind myself that I am baptized, not because I'm special or because I'm different, though I am different. (laughs) Let's be honest, (laughs) I'm different. I'm sorry for that. Um, But because it reminds me that no matter what it is that comes my direction. There really is no way in which God is not present. God is always there. Always listening, walking alongside of us, hearing things that we say in our head that we dare not say with our lips or think in our minds that we dare not say out loud. God is right there. And because there is hope, we are called into into the living and the daring of hope in the world. In a confidence that no matter what is to come, that God has us close. Where have you found, have you seen, have you sensed God's presence in your life? People tend to think about the good things that have happened. But I'm here to tell you that the God who comes to us in Jesus Christ who names and claims us in the waters of baptism, is the God who shows up when all hell breaks loose. When it feels like we're at our wit's end, or at the end, or at an end, or at an impasse, it is there and then that God shows up and is present. We may not understand it or know it, but it's true. Several years ago, a former uh, seminary professor of mine, uh, who is now my friend, uh, came to see me because something was going on in my extended family that was hard. And um, she took me to dinner, and we went to Applebee's, if you must know. We went to Applebee's, and we sat there, and she said, I want you to know She said that while you cannot see hope right now, I will watch it for you. I will tell you where it is until you can see it again for yourself. I invite you, friends, to take up this practice as you walk alongside one another. To walk alongside one another and to proclaim hope to one another. For where there is hope, there is community. And where there is community, there is life. In these days, as we gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we gather confident in this. that nothing in all of creation can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. For God is on the loose. And because God is on the loose, so too are we. Amen.
Please rise and let's join together in confessing our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We live in a time right now, O oh God, where it is hard to know your presence and your love, not because you're not here, because of course you are, but because so many other things flood through our minds and hearts. So, gracious God, tear open the heavens and come down. Be on the loose in the life of this world, in the life of this community, in the life of this congregation, in the lives of the families and individuals who are members and who are paying attention to this uh, over, the, over TV. Help us to know that you have us and will not let us go, that in the waters of baptism, you have announced it once for all, that we are yours and you are ours no matter what. Thank you, God. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, be with those who, in this season of Epiphany, feel weary or winded or sad or, or are really confused about everything that's happening around them. Speak into their lives, O oh God, a whisper, a word of hope, so that they may know your presence and love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, you are with us whether we are well or ill. We, uh, we name before you brothers and sisters who are in need of your healing, especially Ron, Yvonne, Sandy, Milton, Norm, Donald, Renata, Brian, Warren, Tom, Tom, Roger, and Judy. We also name before you, God, those who are homebound and who are in need of your presence in the midst of isolation, especially Zelda, Lucille, Alvin, Flossie, Milton, Ruth and Gail. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, sometimes it isn't in families or individuals who feel like they don't know where hope is found, but sometimes as people gather in communities, sometimes that can be difficult to locate. And so we ask for your presence among us as a congregation. As we seek your direction, as we seek your word, as we seek your leading in our lives. Be with us and be with St. Paul's as well. Help us to know, O oh God, that you are here and that you are in fact leading and guiding and loving us. Lord, or hear us, O oh God. All of these things and whatever else we should ask, we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. This would normally be the time where we would collect the offering, share the peace and collect uh, the offering. Uh, I want to say a word of thanks to those who are 
partnering with us through the gifts, the financial gifts and other ways so that we may continue to be about the work of mission and ministry as Zion Lutheran. We are so glad and so grateful for you all. And I am so glad and so grateful to be your interim pastor. This is an exciting time in the life of any congregation. It may feel otherwise, but it actually is very exciting to see how the Spirit will lead and guide. And I do believe and I do know that the Spirit leads and guides. So I invite you to join us in paying attention to that in our lives and in our life together. Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms wide open. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with the same love through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Please take out your uh, communion elements and please rise as you're able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. In these gifts, God shows up and makes all things new. You may be seated. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Please be seated. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet nourished in body and in spirit to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. Please rise. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now shine, Jesus, shine.
Go in peace, serve the Lord, don't you know?